Hi, TDF fans. I'm Jennifer Samard. I'm brunette with glasses and incredibly hot. I, I concur. That is true. Uh, my name's Adam Godley. Um, I'm also incredibly hot. I concur. And, uh, yeah, I've got a beard and brown curly hair. Well, we are fortunate enough to play the villains, which is always more fun, isn't it, Adam? In always. Once Upon a One More Time, the new musical based on the hits of Ms. Britney Spears. And it's a blast, so come see us. Yes, uh, I play the narrator who uh, is very protective of the traditional fairy tales in the story. Yes, and I play the stepmother, and I think really the show's about me, in my mind, in, right, yeah. basically. All right, shall we get started? Let's go. First question. First question. All right, I'm going to read it. Both of you joined the cast of Once Upon a One More Time on Broadway. How did you become involved with the show? Adam, would you like to start? I would. I Well, I sort of had no choice because my partner is the brilliant writer, John Hartnier. Um, so he wrote the book for this show. So I've been aware of it for a very long time and took part in a very early reading, I think in 2017. And the show has obviously undergone um, a great deal of work and, and transformed over that period of time. Um, so when the dates for the final production on Broadway came along and I was free, I jumped at the chance of being able to be a part of it. Uh, so it's uh, been thrilling for me to be able to work for the first time with John and uh, on this extraordinary show. And I uh, got a wonderful Christmas present last December where I, I got a phone call inquiring about my interest in the project and would I be willing to come in for a meeting uh, after the new year. And I did. I met with uh, David Laveau, the creative consultant, uh, with whom I did a reading of Zorba in 2010. Uh, and the Nederlander organization knows me because I did disaster at their namesake theater. And so uh, the producers were very kind and uh, David was very kind at this meeting and we spoke for 90 minutes and that was it. And then they offered me the part, which is incredible. And I've been so happy to be a part of this incredible show ever since, especially starring opposite Mr. Godley. And can I just ask you, Jen, was Disaster the title of a show or a thing? It was, <laughs> it was the title of the show, Disaster okay. Musical, yes. Just to, wanted to clear that up. Thank you very much. Very good. Next question, uh, which is what surprised you most during rehearsal, Jen? Mm -hmm. I'd have to say the choreography. I don't think Broadway has seen anything quite like it. The incredible pop moves of Keone and Mari are just out of this world, as well as our dancers. I, I truly was surprised, blown away in the best possible way by the level of skill, not only in the choreography, but the dancing. I guess that's my my answer. What about you? Uh, I, absolutely that. And I would also add to that, that to watch dancers in rehearsal, they, they speak their own language. And, mm -hmm. you know, they'd suddenly be given a completely different set of moves they disappear into a corner for sort of three and a half minutes to practice it. And then they would have it perfectly, all of them in unison. And if you don't sort of speak that language, it, it's sort of magic to watch that in front of your eyes just happen. Uh, it's really extraordinary and a real shout out to our incredible dancers in the show. Yeah, I think also I took particular pleasure in listening to people in the room responding to the wit of the show and the story is very, very funny. And John has a very particular kind of sharp, funny, smart, funny thing. And yeah. people that get that and enjoy that, it's it's sort of deeply satisfying to watch that. So, so to watch all of these different elements coming together was uh, just thrilling in rehearsal. Yeah, agreed. All right. What is your favorite part of each other's performance, Anna? Can you love me? <laughs> well, I I have the extraordinary privilege of standing inches away every night from Jen Samad as she sings this incredible number, Toxic, 
And it's, an ex it's a very powerful number. And what she does is, is very powerful. And the miraculous thing to me, being inches away from Jen, is that it appears to take no effort at all. There's no strain, there's no, she just opens her mouth and this incredible noise just comes out. And I guess it's a tribute to your extraordinary technical ability, your skill and your experience. It's just beautiful, because you'd think standing inches away from someone and belting out a number is it, it could be a fairly horrific experience but it's completely the opposite. It's absolutely beautiful. She looks beautiful and this beautiful, extraordinary noise just comes out of her. So for me, it's that. Oh, right. Uh, it's hard to pick just one thing, everyone, about what I love about Adam. I wanna start by saying you are the grounding force in our show. We are so lucky to have this extraordinary actor who adds the gravitas, the truth, every night to this to this performance? I could also say toxic. The, what you give me in return, it is our number, and it is quite thrilling. But I do want to say this harkens back to the last question of surprise. One of my favorite things, Adam, was the first moment I discovered your voice. I mean, your speaking voice. Our little girl at the end says, and I love your voice. And Adam has a wonderful comedic moment. I don't want to ruin it all for you. Um, when you know when, when he asks her a question but for me it was in rehearsal i never told you this at the very top of the show adam says ready all the child is choosing anyone's tale could be selected tonight who would it be and then this giant booming baritone came out of this lovely kind stoic person and it went something like this so no and i was like oh adam Conley. it was so powerful and i I could not believe this incredible trained actor is the person that I get to play opposite every night. And it only builds from there with every choice you make that's always based in truth and honesty. And it adds such a high level to our show. That's, thank you. Thank You're you welcome. for that. Mm -hmm. Next question, moving swiftly on. Mm -hmm. um, how are audiences responding and which moments get the biggest reaction? Well, they're so into it. By the end of the night, they're on their feet. It is just joy, pure joy. I would say that some of the biggest reactions happen after the classic numbers that happen to be the, filled with the most incredible dance, as we've described, numbers like circus, numbers like crazy. Uh, uh, they do respond to our number toxic quite well, quite uh, the dancing in that. It's not just me. It's not just Adam. They, they're just what, what they have created is such a beautiful, what Adam, you look like you want to say something. No, no, I was, oh. I was, I was agreeing with you. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it's the, the sort of combination of all those elements coming together, isn't it? Yes. So that's what I think the audience responds to. Yeah. How about you? I think, um, yes, it, it's, it's a kind of explosion of joy and it builds during the course of the show. And, you know, it's quite something to be standing in the wings uh, and I'm, I'm waiting to go on and I'm watching these numbers being performed or I'm watching a scene being performed. And you hear this kind of explosive joy coming from the audience and the whole object of the exercise was to bring as much joy as possible to as many people as possible. And it's deeply satisfying to hear that level of genuine laughter, fun, delight, surprise, and, and just pure joy emanating from the audience. Uh, these kind of show-stopping reactions. Um, it's really a beautiful thing to, to witness from the other side, and it feeds us and gives us energy. Um, and so it's a real kind of two way street every evening. And it's a, it's a really beautiful thing. All right, both of your characters hold positions of power over the others. How do you tap into your dark side? My goodness. Well, um, I guess if we accept that as human beings, we're all many different things. So we all have all these things within us. Um, I think when the writing is, is really good, it helps because you just instinctively kind of go with it. 
Um, I think I understand the role of the narrator in the show. He's, uh, you know, he's he 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 does sort of he does evil things, but I don't think he is evil. Um, and I understand why he does those things. He's trying to protect something. And there was a line in the in the show about scared people do scary things. Um, so I think for me, the way in is by understanding the why. Why does he do this? And and examining that. And if I understand that, then the right, the suitable, the appropriate response will come out. And of course, you add to that the 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 setting, the scenery, the story, the narrative. It all feeds all of that. So I just have to come in and sort of glide on top of that and mm -hmm. you know deliver those lines. Um, so I think yeah, all of those things help me to tap into the dark side. Mm -hmm. uh, and those things are all things within us. We've just got to kind of access them. Yes, that's my answer. What about uh, you? Bring, well, you bring up an interesting point. I I don't think that any villain thinks they're the villain of their own story right? Yeah. You must play it that way. Uh, for me, how do I access the dark side? It's always there, as Adam says. But uh, something I like to discuss is in comedy, which, uh, and not everything I do in the show is comedic. Sometimes it is quite dramatic. But either way, but in comedy specifically, I believe the best comedy comes from pain. The pain inside a character. And if you can find what where the pain is, that's the nougaty center of the Snickers bar. You know, that's the best part of the Snickers bar. And so if you can find where that is in the person, then, then it is coming from a place of truth because what is their goal? What is their motivation? What is their frustration? So pain in this case for me equals the dark side. And uh, that to me is the key. That's my answer. Yeah. And it's, it's absolutely true of both the characters that we play in the show, that they are fighting for something they passionately believe in and want. Mm -hmm. And and the stronger we do that, the more we do that, the more powerful, hopefully, the performance is. Agreed. Yeah. Is it my turn? It's your turn. Cinderella is a rebel in Once Upon a One More Time. If you were to lead a revolution, what would it be about? could be so many things. Uh, I believe what is inspiring me today would be I would start a revolution to teach emotional intelligence in school. Emotional intelligence is just as important as book intelligence. And I think it would be really great to teach people that. We'd have a lot more uh, success in the workplace and in our personal lives if we learned that. From an early age that would be my revolution adam it's interesting because you know jen and i have not consulted on these answers but i i feel exactly the same i i would lead a revolution of empathy to spread empathy oh. and people's ability to empathize as mm -hmm. human beings if we nurture empathy in its truest and purest form mm -hmm. it, it would really start to heal the world and I, I absolutely agree. It is something that should be taught in school because it not only helps the world, it helps you as a human being moving through the world. You know, pe people are always kind of doing things and kind of annoying us and whatever. And if you don't, if you don't for a moment think, well, maybe what is that person going through? Why are they behaving like that? It, it, it's the actor's kind of primary question is always why. Why is my character doing this? But also as human beings, it's such a useful tool. Why is that person behaving like that? Why Why is that guy driving down the street honking his horn? Yeah. Um, you know, empathy, empathy, spreading empathy. So yeah, complete agreement with you, Jen. This is not in the questions, but Adam, will you be my friend forever? Yes, if you'll be my okay. friend. Yes, okay. Moving on. <clears throat> Adam, what's your favorite fairy tale and why? Working with Jen Simard. Did you record, is this recording? Is this recording? Everyone got that? Okay, great. <laughs> That's so nice. Is that what you told me to say? Isn't that what you told me to say? <laughs> I get a text this yeah. morning. Um, okay. Uh, to... My turn? What? No, do you have a, is that no, your real answer? That's my answer. Oh my gosh. Yeah. 
all right, well, just to be different, because I concur it's working with you. But if I, if pressed, I would say Sleeping Beauty because I love to take naps. Ah, I yes. love naps. And in the original story, after she pricks her finger, she slept for a hundred years. Oh, it sound great. Heaven. Yes, I can. You've got to have the right kind of sheets, though, and the right match. Oh, yeah. Like 20,000 thread count. Yeah, Something and the right okay. snacks if you kind of slightly come out of your sleep and just need a little snack. A little, like just cook, she wakes up in 100 years with cookie crumbs. Just All everywhere. over, just, just yeah, um, very six feet deep in cookie crumbs. Yes. Yeah. Sounds like heaven. Yeah. Is it me? It's you, dear. Once upon a one more, it's you, dear. Once it's upon a one more time is attracting an audience of young and diverse Britney fans. Why is it important that Broadway expand its reach? Oh my goodness. Well, now we're getting into a whole socioeconomic uh, question. And the, one of the things I love about the arts is the, the arts have always commented on the socioeconomic political climate in culture. And it's extremely important to widen the audience. So many people have never seen a Broadway show. How many artists are out there in the making, both on stage and backstage, the magic, the way, as we've been discussing, theater can heal you emotionally and make you question. And I, I, I truly hope that we continue with some of the great strides we've made in the last couple of years. Um, you know, we're baby steps forward and uh, may that continue. Adam, what do you think? Yeah, I agree with you. Absolutely. I think art is just human beings talking to each other, uh, expressing how they feel. It's for everybody. That's the whole point of it. There's no, there shouldn't be any kind of elitism in art. Everybody should have access to every kind of art, every art museum, every concert hall, every arena, every theater, musical theater, plays, whatever it is, everybody should have access to all of it. And so it's crucially important that Broadway, and I think many people think of Broadway as musical theater, but of course it's plays as well. Um, and they, they are great art forms and there's, there's sort of nowhere really that does it better so if if you've never done it, if you've never been to a broadway theater if you've never been to a museum if you've never been to a classical concert just give it a go um it's for everybody it's not for some elite group sitting up there um it should be uh, must be for everybody and of course you know that that's partly an issue of ticket prices and so on but um mm -hmm. yeah art must be for everybody that's the whole point of it Agreed. Uh, <clears throat> Adam, do you have an answer for this as, as a man from Britain? I don't really. Um, Would you like to, uh, why don't you ask me? Because I think I do. Jen. Yes. What's the best deal you've ever got at the TKTS booth, which just celebrated its 50th anniversary? I love this question because the best deal that I remember is getting a ticket to see the Goodbye Girl at the Marquee Theater, starring my idol, Miss Bernadette Peters, three-time Tony Award recipient, Miss Bernadette Peters. And I remember sitting, I still remember where I was sitting. I was in the upper balcony, uh, audience left, so stage right. And I was looking down at that stage wondering, gosh, I would love to be on that stage in this theater one day like my idol. And here I am at the Marquee Theater in Once Upon a One More Time. So Isn't that crazy. Yes. So you never know. So That's it. It, yeah, and it was it was made it affordable for me to go see that and dream. Yeah. And here, so, here, here we are. So get to the TKTS booth. See what's yeah. out there. Yeah. See what's there. Oh, this is our last question. Okay. I'll ask you Adam. Last question. Yeah. Be each other's casting directors. What role would you put the other in? Well, I, I know that Jen Samard has <laughs> French European roots. And of course she is a queen as we all know. So I think, I think any period drama that involves a French queen, Jen Samard has to be at the top of the list. 
I know you'd look fabulous in a in a crown and, and all mm. that. As long Amazing as we can period do costumes. So casting directors take note. European French Queen. All right. In Simard. She's there. She's there. <laughs> Let's do that film together. Um yeah. I'm going to, I think I'm gonna out us, Adam, the discussion we've had. So my dear friend Christopher Sieber and Rachel Stern created an idea and we'll definitely give them points as the creators conceivers but at I, I would cast adam in a show that i've mentioned to him called whispers in pajamas where adam and i would just be in two single hospital beds and we'd be in our pajamas and the entire show would be lying down and whispering right adam yeah and and, and practical snacks just a glass of water hmm. How are you today? I'm good. How are you? Good. Yeah. Just relax. Let's go to sleep. Yeah. Let's have it. Would... Yeah. That's what I would cast. It'd be great for us. I would love it. Yeah. How it shows you would be to watch, I don't know, but we would love it. We would love that. Quiet, comfortable. Comfortable. The sheets are very important. High thread count. 20,000 thread count. Yeah. And the right kind of pillows. Yeah. Blankies, blankies. Yeah. And maybe a sort of automatic, so the bed automatically kind of sits up when you have to speak. You just press a button and then you can just go back down again. And the Tony goes to Adam Godley Gen for whispers, whispers in Pajamas. Whispers Thank in you. Pajamas. Thank you, Rachel Stern and Christopher Sieber. There you go. Thank you all for listening to our nonsense. <laughs> and uh, get to a theater get to a theater. Thank you all. Thanks. Bye-bye.